Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Miles with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got a little indoor project I need to do today and this has been something I've been kind of thinking about that I needed to do for a long, long time. Basically ever since I moved into the house. Uh, it was really all kind of triggered a couple weeks ago when I was installing those string lights out in the backyard and spent so much time trying to figure out which breaker I had to power off in order to deactivate the outlet so that I could safely work on the system. And uh, at that point I discovered that the breaker box here in the garage, it, it isn't very well documented. And in addition to that, when I had the house inspection done when I, before I moved in, the inspector mentioned that there was something odd about the way a couple of the breakers were wired up. Uh, he kind of, you know, didn't really explain it and I didn't really understand it that well. And I kind of got the impression that what had happened is that they had updated the house's electrical system at some point, probably adding more breakers than the, than were going through this main breaker. And they added a second breaker in order to kind of deal with the extra load. And like I said, I don't really have a clear, inf a clear image in my head about how that all works. So I want to figure figure that out today also. But what I want to do is I basically want to figure out what outlets are, are controlled by what breaker. And that basically means I'm going to power everything off in the house and we're going to flip them on one at a time and we're going to see what happens. But like I said, I also want to figure out uh, what it is with those breakers that uh, the inspector said was odd. And that's going to have to start by me taking this metal plate off so I can look at what's behind there. Because I suspect that's how he discovered what the issue was. Because it's clear he didn't go through and check actually check every outlet in the house. Because as you recall there was that one outlet here in the garage that was broken that was a real fire hazard. And if he'd even plugged a, a little uh, circuit tester into that he would have realized there was a problem there so obviously he didn't do that he probably just took the panel off and took took a look behind that so I think that's where we got to start now in order for me to properly document it I basically drawn a picture of every room in the house and the outside of the house and where all the outlets are, where all the switches are, where all the lights are, where everything is in the house. So that when I go around here and am tracing what's on with certain breakers, I can kind of go in here and uh, say, okay, this is attached to this breaker, this is attached to that breaker, and so on and so forth. So I want to document it really well. Then we're going to put it on the computer, maybe even draw out a uh, scale model of the house where everything is documented. But I'm also going to take it to another level. I've purchased one of these little uh, brother label maker things. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create labels for every switch plate, every outlets plate in the house. And we're going to actually uh, put a little label on it that says what breaker controls it. Now, I don't want to put them on the outside of the uh, of the plates because I don't want them visible but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on the back side of the plate so all I have to do is I can pull the plate off and it'll say on the back side there which circuit breaker controls that outlet. I think that's a real efficient way of doing it and it'll make it easier in the future when I need to do electrical work in the house to figure out how to, de how to safely deactivate that outlet. And finally, this is where the master power line for the entertainment system up above comes in and plugs into the wall here. And as you can see, the cable's a little longer than I need it to be. So what I've done is I bought one of these cool little uh, electrical plugs that basically you can orient it any way. And I'm just going to actually cut the wire off here and put the plug on it and it'll just come right down it'll be the perfect length and it'll plug right into the outlet. So, like I said, that's just one additional thing that I'm going to do since the power is already going to be off. And that means I need to power this system down too. Because uh, for the same reason I don't want to have, uh, you know, be pulling the plug on the computer when I'm, uh, you know, flipping the breakers been, uh, in the past, I don't want to do that either. Now to assist in this whole process, I've actually literally gone into every room in the house and literally turned on every light in the house. That way when I power things down um, and then power up one breaker or another, I'll be able to kind of at least get an idea where you know, the power is going and that'll at least give me a clue where to look because there's you know, dozens and dozens of outlets in this house and uh, you know, it just, it's just a matter of kind of narrowing down where everything is and uh, kind of because because I'm guessing probably in most cases uh, the same uh, the same breakers that control the outlets probably also control the uh, 
the lights and all that stuff in here too. So like I said, that's just a process to help narrow down where everything is. But that's what I've done is I flipped on every light in the house. All right, so I got the panel off and I gotta admit, I'm not really that sure what's going on here. It's a rat's nest in here. I know I do have kind of a mixture of voltages in here because there's a 120 which is powering most of the house, but there's a couple places in the house like right here and also in the laundry room that has a 240 panel going into it. So I suspect that's probably what this is here, is the, the 240 line. And that's a big hefty breaker too, because that's a 50 amp breaker. Most of the rest of these are 20 or 30 amps. Uh, but it was something special, supposedly, with these breakers here. And so I think I'm gonna start by shutting off these five here. And let's see what that happens, what happens. If I'm right, that should kill power to probably all of the house. So let's see what happens. All right, as expected, it looks like this killed power to almost all of the house. So all of the lights are off now. There doesn't appear to be any power in the house with one exception. And I don't really understand that one exception, but it appears that there is still power on the range. Microwaves off, refrigerators off. We're gonna keep that closed because we don't wanna want to uh, let out all the cold that will only be temporary and everything else in the house appears to be dead from those five switches but like I said I don't understand why the uh, the range is still on but now I'm going to go flip a couple of them on and let's see what comes back on all right so as far as I can tell this seems to be the main switch for the air conditioning compressor and these two are the are the odd man plugs. These are the ones that seem to go to, you know, one of them shuts off half the house, the other one shuts off the other half of the house. I have still not figured out what these do. Uh, so I think we're just gonna probably leave all of this on at this point. It isn't really relevant that I have the ability to kill power to half the house. When I can figure, if I can just figure out what all these down here are doing, that will uh, really kind of uh, solve the issue that I'm trying to deal with today. But uh, like I said, one of these shuts off half the house, the other shuts off the other half of the house. So this is clearly, these are the, the two strange outlets here because normally there'd be one outlet that would control all of it. So maybe what's going on is this might be like the master power that feeds to these two and then these two break off into the rest of them. I don't know. Uh, but like I said, I don't really need to understand this end of it. It's all about what's going on down here. So I'm gonna flip all of these off and we're going to turn them all on one at a time and figure out what's going on. All right, and that one too, just for good luck. All right, so that should kill all the power in the house. Let's go verify that everything is off. And then we'll come back here and we'll start flipping these on one at a time and tracing everything back. So before we go too much further here, I think I'm going to put this panel back on just because it'll make it easier because they're all numbered here and it isn't really quite clear which breaker is which uh, when you're just looking at this. So it'll make it easier to figure out what's going on. It'll also be safer too because, you know, you don't want to get back there and mess with that power because that will ruin your day if you uh, touch one of those live wires. Especially those wires right there, those big nasty ones coming in here. That's the main power coming in from the how from the street. All right, so I got an interesting little clue here. Uh, everything is off in the house except for these five breakers here, and I just heard the air conditioning come on. So I'm going to try and figure out which one of uh, these breakers. I suspect it's this one up here. I originally thought that was master to the house, but that doesn't seem to be. Uh, it probably has to do with the air conditioning. So I'm going to shut that one off, and let's see if that shuts off the air conditioning. Then I'll at least know what that one is. All right, that's good to know. That one there is definitely the air conditioning. So that's good to know that that's separate from everything else and that I can uh, turn that back on and keep the air conditioning going even though the rest of the house is dead. So I'm gonna power that one back on. That's a big 50 amp breaker and it's a very hard switch to flip. So we're gonna leave that one on and that'll allow us to keep the house cool. So that's good to know. Uh, top one is air conditioning. This one's half the house, this one's half the house. Still not sure what these do. All right, several hours have gone by and I think I have found everything here. Um, 
at least every outlet and every light and everything that I can find that uses power, I've identified what breaker it's on. Now when I got to the end of it, this is kind of how the panel assignment lays out. And you can see there's a few blank spaces here where there are breakers that, to the best of my knowledge, I can't figure out what they do. Now I've intentionally left them all on because it's very possible that maybe it's like water heater or furnace or things that I didn't really get in and test because it, hey, it's 95 degrees out today. The last thing I want to be doing is turn on the heat, right? So um, I left everything on, but like I said, everything that I have found, everything that I know, I now know which breaker it's on. And so that's a good thing. You know, I've just documented everything very carefully. This is uh, the kitchen, dining room, master bathroom, the hall, the living room, the cat's room, the guest bedroom, outside, laundry room, master bedroom. You know, I basically drew a picture of every every room where anything is on the walls, on the ceiling, on anything like that, so that I can uh, kind of make sure I know what breaker all of those things are on. And then, like I said, I created a master list here, which uh, says, you know, everything that's on each breaker. So I think at some point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a scale drawing of the house with all the dimensions and to show everything where everything is. And I think that'll uh, be a good thing. But right now, for now, I've got everything documented and that's pretty much what I wanted to do today, to be able to look at the house and say, okay, I've got this outlet, how do I turn it off? Now I can do that. I still haven't figured out, like I said, uh, what a couple of those breakers uh, that uh, that are part of the, the master system, whatever they do. I'm still not sure entirely what they do, but like I said, I left them on just to be safe because I don't want to suddenly discover I don't have hot water or something like that because I left something off. So anyway, I think the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on that electrical plug that I was going to put on the power strip for the uh, entertainment system, and then we will wrap this thing up today. Now I've used these plugs a bunch of times in a bunch of applications and what I really like about them is that you can you can twist the uh, the receptacle around any way you want it in order to make it fit right and so once you get it locked into place for instance if I wanted the plug to you want to be able to plug it into the wall and have the cord come out the side I can orient it that way in this case what I want to do is I want to have the the cord coming out the top so you know normally it would be it would be oriented like this you know and the cord would go down but I don't want the cord to go down I want the cord to go up so what I can do is rotate this around and do it this way plug it into the wall the cord will go up it'll go into my little conduit thing and it'll be just perfect and it won't be there won't be any of this excess slack that we have uh, here on with the current cord so I'll just end up cutting it off a little bit longer than this top outlet right here and uh, we will wire it up and it'll be just perfect all right, so I got the wire basically set up. I haven't put the sheath on top of it yet, but what I wanted to do is test it out, make sure it worked first. I don't want to touch this right now because I've reactivated the breaker, so that's a live circuit. But basically, I have it connected up to this, uh, this power strip under here, and I just put my little cable tester on it just to make sure everything looks good, and it looks good. The outer two lights are lit. The one in the middle is not lit. I know it kind of looks in the picture like it is, but it actually isn't. The center one isn't lit. The two outer ones are lit. So that's proper wiring. So I'm going to shut the breaker off again. We're going to put the sheath back on this plug and uh, we're done. All right. So there's the final product. Um, as you can see, the cord just kind of comes right out of the conduit, goes right into the plug and it's real neat. There's no excess cord in there and I have uh, space for another outlet if I need to plug something else into there. So yeah, that was kind of the goal here. Just kind of neaten things up, make it so that there aren't wires hanging out all over the place, or at least minimize them as much as possible. And it was made a lot easier now that I know which breaker this outlet uh, plugs into. So I was able to easily disable this outlet and uh, so I can safely make these kinds of adjustments and things like that. So there you go. All right, so I did a little brief costume change for our final uh, scene of the video. Uh, this is your last few days in order to buy one of my t-shirts. So, uh, you know, the, the sales end on Monday night at midnight Texas time, because on Tuesday morning, I am going to go out and place an order for these. So, uh, once again, the shirts are $20 a piece. You have a choice of four different colors. The gray one, like I'm wearing here, we have a light blue, we have a yellow, and we have pink. 
and you can get a unisex, you can get a women's t-shirt, and we also have children's and toddler sizes. So uh, last chance here, $6 shipping in the United States. Contact me ahead of time if you want to ship outside of the United States uh, because we'll figure out what the, what the shipping will be for that ahead of time so you know. Uh, you'll make the payment via PayPal and uh, we'll get them printed and sent out to you right away. So last chance. So thank you as always for watching uh, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.